So that gurgling noise is what's called an anti-siphon loop, and it's uh, it's basically a portion of the raw water uh, cooling circuit from the generator that runs into the cockpit drains. Um, the engine does the same thing, and oysters set it up this way so that um, it, it's obviously an anti-siphon, um, which is what it's called, so, that, so the water doesn't siphon back into the engine, but it also allows you to hear whether the raw water pump is working properly by that gurgling noise. Um, so when you stop hearing that, you know something's wrong. Uh, uh, however, um, that said, we'll move on to the problems we've had with the generator. Uh, but this season has been rough um, as far as this generator has gone. It really hasn't worked at all until very late in the season. And, and I don't want to jump on Fisher Panda too hard about it because it really comes down to third party um, parts uh, for the system. I mean, f for example, you know, the, the engine itself is a Kabuta two cylinder small diesel engine. Um, uh, the, 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 you know, you've got various electronic parts, solenoids, relays, a raw water pump from Johnson, um, a bunch of different manufacturers involved here. So I don't think it's really uh, any one particular company that's at fault here. Um, and as far as generators go, this generator is about as, as, as co compact as you can get and I don't think we have room in our engine room for anything bigger. And that's really is kind of the selling feature of the brand is for, for a 6 kV a 6 kVA uh, generator to take up as such a small amount of room uh, is, is, is a, 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 a real thing. You, I, I, can't, I can't imagine something else. And also, these are ex exceedingly expensive um, to replace. I mean, this thing to replace, it's well north of $10,000. And that doesn't include any of the labor of installing it. Um, so anyway, what we were having was multiple problems occurring at the same time. And we go through that here in this episode to kind of show you how we how we diagnosed it. But I have to say in the beginning, it was just a matter of kind of, there's a, there's a limited number of things that can go wrong. And we just kind of started replacing them. Um, but, but the main thing was we weren't getting fuel and that was a that was an early um, uh, test that we realized that we weren't getting fuel. But that but, but once we fixed that problem, it turned out that wasn't that wasn't uh, all there was. There was other things that needed to be fixed. So let's go take a look at the, all that. The fun never ends. Come here, come back now. Come here, show the owner for the boat sometime. So high pressure water, uh, high pressure fuel pump is not working properly so we're pulling that out and um you know, to probably get a new one we're gonna do a few more checks first are all those um screws the same length yeah okay the only one this one over here is a stud uh-huh so it's pretty simple yeah you know, okay all right so there's a nut yeah. on the top of it yeah all right See, this is what we're talking about. This is free. Okay, yeah. He says sometimes it gets stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now if you look, um, can you see? Yep. I'm gonna take a look. Look at this. I see it. The I slot. see the slot down there, okay, yeah. So if you play with, which one is it? I think it's this one. Yeah. Oh, it? yeah. Mm -hmm. So you gotta make sure this fit box in that. Yep. Mm. Well, here's our new high pressure pump for for Kabuta diesel on our Fisher Panda gen set and a couple of extra or new replacement uh, injectors. So we're going to go about installing those this afternoon and see, we'll see how far we can get with this. Okay, so I've taken off the, the uh, high pressure rail and the um, air intake. I still need to remove this solenoid and this solenoid then I can I can get in there and get this all replaced. Apparently the real trick is that there's a bunch of shims underneath this high pressure pump that need to be um, that need to be uh, left in place or, or, or replay it, repaired, but it has to have the same number of shims and the same thickness. So I got the new injectors on here uh, with their cover still on. And just to make sure nothing gets in there, you got to be very careful not to let things get get any kind of foreign contaminants in there. All right, well, my repair was a 50% success. Uh, we got the engine up and running, which is the big thing, but it wants to shut itself back down again. I don't, I don't, don't think it was an error to, to order the new pump because we weren't getting any 
any fuel whatsoever at the engine um, and now we are and it won't run without fuel diesel engines are very simple all they really need is is fuel and air and compression um, there's no spark plugs or anything like that so I'm kind of thinking that if I disconnect the stop solenoid it runs that's no problem I could turn it off manually but then I don't have any of the protection so the oil will cool it and started the engine made it run for 15 seconds or so and it wasn't drawing any water at all so the raw water pump is 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 not working and it's probably because we've been running the engine for a while out of you know um, not a while like 15 seconds at a time or so for a while um, without any water coming in from the seacock um, and the reason for that is that if you try to start an engine too many times uh, it's it's easy to hydrolock the engine, which means that you bring you're not with the, with the engine not running and without combustion to push the water through the system. What ends up happening is that the um, is that the water backs up through the exhaust manifold, goes into the cylinders, and once the piston comes you know screaming up to the top of the compression um, and hits water instead of air, water and you know, water itself cannot be compressed, and so it it just stops the thing dead and then all sorts of bad things happen. Um, you basically ruin the engine. It can sometimes be rebuilt with new push rods or straightened push rods, but bent valves and things like that, and even uh, punctured um, piston heads can, um, are, are, are some of the things that can happen. So you have to be very, very careful. And, and given that, I would much rather, and I've always said this, I would much rather have to replace an impeller on a raw water pump than I would have to rebuild an engine. And so. We, it was a matter of one or the other and so i think we paid the price probably with this um with this raw water pump so i have other impellers it's just a matter of doing the work of taking it apart which is a drag i mean i admit that that's not good um and I'm, i think what i'm going to do is take the plate off first here and just take a look inside it's it's a brand new pump from last year and we've had problems with it already it, 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 the seal went bad last year um, and dripped water down and one of the things I did last week was I I filled this whole area in with um, West Systems uh, G-Flex epoxy because it's just been eroding the aluminum and eventually it'll erode through it and then once that happens water and everything will come out of the stator because this is the cooling circuit for the stator um, and so um, I did that I also put this piece of of, of zip tie on there so that any water that does drip down I want it to kind of through capillary action kind of drip down here instead I might want to put another one over here later at some point but it is it is dry it's it's not dripping right now so but when the when the seal goes bad it comes down the body down this elbow and boom right down onto here so we're um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tackle that project first what? That impeller does not <coughs> look bad at all. Um, that's exactly how it should look. I like this new pump design with the O-ring. A lot better than the previous one. Um, as you can see from the angle of that folded impeller vein there, the, the 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 cycle of water actually does not go straight through from top to bottom it goes out and around but yeah this thing should be running it should be pulling water through um don't quite know what to do with this everything ought to be running properly here now let's try this and see what happens put it back together all right, so what I've done is I've run a, a hose to the bilge so because I want to watch this pump operate. Got my, it's not going through the um, heat exchanger. Um, we did change the oil, oil and filter change. Um, this pump may have just needed to be primed and uh, it seems like all the veins are good. So let's give it a shot and see. All right, when, well, no, no heat, just start it up. Yep.
Jacksonville. I had to manually turn it off because the stop button's not working. And I have no idea what's going on with this thing as far as that goes. Um, it, it calls into question whether, the, whether this system's gonna function properly uh, if it needs to shut itself down for some reason. And that's the thing. I mean, I, I could run it like a lawnmower engine, but the problem is that if it overheats, if it gets, if it gets um, you know, seaweed or something in the raw water strainers, it's not going to be able to shut itself off and that that bothers me um, and I don't quite know what to do I mean it's running and I haven't tried to turn on the power yet and we're going to do that here in a minute as soon as I get it running with the um, system in place and confirm that there's water but the, the, the cooling the rest of the cooling circuit is, is, is reattached um, I'll I'll give it a try and, and see how things are looking. Um, I, it looks like water, raw water is going through the system. I can see it bubbling up on the side of the boat. Um, that's that's working properly. The only thing is this this solenoid here just wants to keep shutting it down, and that's what's bothering me about why it wants to shut itself down on its own. I'm wondering if it's seeing something that um, that uh, isn't um, isn't right, and I and I, I I can't imagine what that is. I went through, I, I, I checked all three of the, of the relays um, yesterday. They all seem to be fine. I interchanged a new relay for each um, and made no change to anything. Everything was working same as before, um, but I just don't know what to do. Um, I mean, it's due for a replacement um, next year, but I certainly don't want to abuse it, especially not when it's working. Um, otherwise, I, I feel as though there's just one thing missing someplace. Tell me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just stabbing it in the dark now, but I'm looking at trying to see if I can get the, um, the, the, the exhaust temperature switch back, way back on the exhaust elbow, mixing elbow. I disconnected it. It's... Um, the last thing I haven't really played with. So I'm gonna try it and see what happens. It should be a normally open, normally closed type switch. Am I beautiful? Okay, good enough. So yesterday we had a guy come aboard the boat who is a professional generator repairman, um, an electrician and, and mechanic. Uh, and this was a fortuitous situation. One of the things that, you know, you come across when you're sailing is this, you know, you just kind of come across people um, whenever you seem to need help the most, somebody appears. And here in this situation, um, Wendy um, has a friend who lives on the island. Um, he's a guy who used to teach with her at Longshore Sailing School in Westport, Connecticut, um, growing up, and they rode their bikes to, to the sailing school every day. So um, there was some, some, some great uh, conversation around that, but it turns out that he knew a guy who's a, a, a professional generator repair guy. So um, some calls were made, and the next thing you know, he shows up, Tom shows up, and um, together we really dug into this generator and started looking and testing it, all the various circuits. And what we did, what we found eventually was, if, once we chased this down to what's called the stop, the stop relay or shut off relay, is this section of this print circuit board is just flaking off and missing. Um, and we believe that that's probably the reason why we're getting such odd behavior um, from the stop solenoid, which this relay controls. It's um, the circuitry on the engine side of the Fisher Panda generator system is not particularly complicated. It's basically just a protection system that, that will shut the engine down should um, should you know temperatures go outside of the ranges for or oil pressure. So that was confusing. Um, and so, but I think that this board um, is most, the most likely candidate at this point, especially since it controls the stop function of the, of the engine. So we're gonna order a new one of those. Um, unfortunately, that means we are still down as far as our generator goes, but I think we're making progress. And the generator itself is running well. We have water running through it, like everything is working on the thing. Uh, we're gonna follow this path, again, a relatively you know, I, I don't know what the price is on this um, on this relay, but relays typically aren't crazy expensive. So we'll see how that how that goes. Um, it's a standard Denso um, uh, brand uh, product, so I think it should be reasonably priced. Okay. 
Okay, well I've, in, well I've installed this new relay. Let's if I can see it, where is it? <laughs> right there. And uh, we're gonna try it and see what happens here. Let's see. All right, go ahead. Damn. It's working. No way. I'll have to see if it stops with the stop switch, but not working. Let's try this. Um Okay, let's try starting it again. I, I moved the I moved the the solenoid um, to the other to the other uh, to the other pin to the other spade connector. So let's see if this helps. If this works. All right, let's try it now. Starting. Okay, try turning it off now. There we go. That's it. What you have to do? Okay, what I had to do was I had to move. So, so this is a new stop solenoid mm -hmm. um, that's controlled by the relay I just, I just installed, and the old version had two, had two, um, had a plug with with a positive and negative, and so one of these is a ground and the other is is positive, and that actually the green wire is the positive. I, I knew that in advance, but um, now it's uh, now it's set so it actually works. So it was connected to ground before, and that's why it wasn't shutting off, but. Um, now that I've flipped it across, it's working. And now we actually can leave shore and have a good time. Yay. Yay. That's the next level. Mm-hmm. So it's like over there. Okay, so this is what was totally clogged up earlier and that's about as clean as you can get it or I could oh. get it I could change it more but I don't want to knock it too much because I have to chip off the carbon okay that's where the it's clear there that's where the water mix is right there right and it comes in there. so it was clogged to the in the top okay which was there there that's the place that was clogged yeah. Okay. So now it's clear. You can see the hole. There was all the way plugged. If you remember mm -hmm. in the picture, the cylindrical hole was there. Yep. That looks, that looks awesome. That's great. Big improvement. Okay. Terrific. So this is, this is Jamie, and Jamie's the tech that's been working on the Fisher Panda. Uh, he found out that the that the uh, exhaust mixing elbow was completely clogged with carbon uh, to the point that maybe a pencil thickness of uh, a fluid could make it through and that was obviously not the way it's supposed to be so we're uh we're, we got it we got it cleaned and we're pretty much ready to ready to put it back together generator this whole season. Um, here it's putting off net 64 amps up on the master volt panel. Yeah, so we're putting out 78 amps. Um, it, it can go up to 80 and I've got it set for 78. Um, it puts out a little bit more than what it, than what it says. So it's, so it's set at 78 putting out 79.2. Okay, I'll just start it. Start it? Yep. 